This is a warning. Existence should not be taken for granted, especially when you're talking about ODEs. What do I mean by that? We've been working under the assumption that solutions to differential equations exist. Let's see what can go wrong. Consider the following differential equation. dx dt is proportional to x squared. Let's say that constant of proportionality is alpha. Now for this problem, we're going to assume that both alpha and x are positive. This is different from a previous example that we looked at, but there, the power was not two, it was one half, and the constant of proportionality on in front was negative instead of positive. But let's do what we did before. This is a separable differential equation. We could separate and integrate. Multiply through by dt. On the right, we have alpha times dt. On the left, after dividing through by x squared, we've got x to the minus two dx. Integrate both sides. This is not going to be a problem at all. On the left, the integral of x to the negative 2 is minus x to the negative 1. On the right, we have alpha times t uh, plus a constant. Don't want to forget that. What is that constant? If we put in t equals 0 and consider the initial condition at x naught, then we can easily see that that constant c is negative 1 over x naught. Now, a little bit of algebra to solve for x gives us that x is 1 over x naught to the minus 1 minus alpha times t. All right, that's it. We did it. We solved it. Job done. Good job, folks. Let's go home. Oh, wait a minute. We said that alpha was positive, right? Right. We said that x was positive, and hence the initial condition x naught is positive, right? Also right. I'm dividing by something that makes me a little nervous, as it should, because that denominator goes to zero as time increases. And at a finite time, that denominator goes to zero and x goes to infinity. And past that, the solution does not exist. This is bad. This is very bad. If the goal of this differential equation was to model some physical process, I think we have left the realm of physicality, and our solution fails to exist. This failure is a very dangerous thing and is called a finite time blow up, as in, that's it, that solution went to infinity. More importantly, it goes to infinity in a finite time interval, and the solution fails to exist past that singularity. Now, as stated, this is a bad thing. What can we do to prevent this from happening? Are there general conditions under which this does not occur? Let's consider a more general case. Consider the differential equation given by dx dt equals alpha, some constant, times t to the beta, where beta is some constant, times x to the gamma, where again, gamma is some constant. We're going to assume that all these constants, alpha, beta, gamma, they're all positive. Assume that x is positive as well. This is a generalization of what we've just seen. It's a separable first-order equation, and it's easily integrated, following the same approach we've done previously. On the right, multiplying through by dt, we have alpha times t to the beta times dt. On the left, dividing through by x to the gamma, we have x to the minus gamma dx. Integrate both sides, no problem. On the left, integrating x to the minus gamma gives us 1 over 1 minus gamma times x to the 1 minus gamma. On the right, integrating alpha times t to the beta gives us alpha over 1 plus beta t to the 1 plus beta. Don't forget the constant plus c. What is that constant c? Again, just plug in t equals 0 and the initial condition on x, x naught, and we get that that c is 1 over 1 minus gamma times x naught to the 1 minus gamma. Now, we've got a little bit of algebra to do to solve for x, but multiplying through by quantity 1 minus gamma and then taking the 1 over 1 minus gamma power, we get x is quantity alpha times 1 minus gamma divided by 1 plus beta t to the 1 plus beta plus x naught to the 1 minus gamma. All of that stuff 
to the power 1 over 1 minus gamma. Oof, that's such a mess. So much algebra. Oh, what are we going to do with this? Aha, take a look. The critical parameter here is gamma. When gamma is bigger than 1, then we've got all this stuff in the parentheses in the denominator because I'm really taking a negative power here. And because gamma is bigger than 1, the term in front of the t, that's got a negative sign. The initial condition x0, that's positive. That means we're going to get a finite time blow up. There's going to be some time at which, boom, that denominator goes to 0, and the solution fails to exist. Now, this is really interesting because it tells us what the critical parameter is is for that finite time blow up. Let's think for a moment in terms of asymptotics. And let's look at the simpler situation where we've got dx dt is proportional to x to the gamma. Consider what happens to that as t goes to infinity. What does the solution do? When gamma equals 1, we know this. This is our old friend, the linear differential equation. And its solution is an exponential function. Indeed, x is in big O of e to the alpha t. x is exactly some constant times e to the alpha t. Okay, great. Now, as we have shown, when gamma is less than 1, then we've got this complicated solution, right? Go back, take a look at that, and convince yourself that in this case, x has polynomial growth as t goes to infinity. It's in big O of t to the n, where n is anything bigger than 1 over 1 minus gamma. Okay, so for gamma less than 1, polynomial growth. When gamma is equal to 1, exponential growth. When gamma is bigger than 1, we've demonstrated that this equation has a finite time blow up. So it is not only super exponential, it like just blows that out and has a singularity and has a blow up. I think this is super interesting in that the linear differential equation is the critical case. It's the borderline between polynomial growth, exponential growth, and a finite time blow up, a singularity. Now, why are we doing this? Why are we going over all this? Oh, this connects to a much bigger, deeper story in differential equations. There's so much that we could talk about at this point, talking about existence of solutions, uniqueness of solutions, conditions for these things to work out, the magic word here being Lipschitz. We're not going to go into all that, though. You might want to take a dedicated course in differential equations, because there's a ton of interesting and useful stuff there. This calculus treatment of the subject is just getting us close to the interesting stuff. Beware, existence is not guaranteed. You got to be careful when you're working with solutions to differential equations to make sure that the solutions don't blow up.